I love jump lines. So I set off with this 2019 Common Saw Meta HT to turn it into the ultimate jump line slash flow bike. And it's been okay. It wasn't that great at the local bike park on the steep lips, probably because of the slack head tube angle and the long wheelbase. But that's okay because this bike was amazing on my favorite jump line in Bentonville called Cease and Desist. And today we're going all out to finish this build. The goal is to be super lightweight, be simple and dang near indestructible, and three, well, be comfortable and super fun to ride. So let's get started with a clean slate. So I'm sure that you guys saw that running this channel with all the bike builds costs a fortune. And I'm always looking for a way to save money. That's why for years now, I always have PayPal's Honey installed and running on all my browsers. There's nothing worse than trying to find a coupon code on some of the most sketchy websites, getting all these pop-ups and everything, and you still can't find a coupon code. Honey, this video sponsor is the number one shopping tool in America. You can add it onto your browser and it will automatically look for coupon and promo codes so you don't have to. So now when I'm buying bike parts online, Honey is scanning for me and trying out a whole list of codes to see what's the best deal that I can get. And I've scored some rad 15% off or even 20% off coupons before with Honey, and I put in zero effort while Honey did its thing. It's just a really sleek add-on that works in the background for things that you're already buying. And who doesn't love saving money without trying? So instead of just adding Honey to your browser, show some support for this channel and head to joinhoney.com slash Saga. It's free. All right, this bike is stripped down all the way to the frame pretty much, and it is filthy. And uh, I can't exactly clean my bike right now with a hose because there's a whole bunch of snow outside and I don't exactly want to be hosing this thing off in freezing temperatures. So it's a perfect time to try out this Peli Bike Care. And there's some waterless bike wash and then I'm gonna throw on a ceramic coating. And I've been dying to see how good this stuff works. Let's get to work. Well, what do you think of the new fork? It's a 2022 RockShox Pike Ultimate, and it's gonna save 200 grams over the stock Recon. I've never tried a Pike Ultimate before, but I've had some pretty nice forks over the years, and once you feel the pillow-like plushness of a nice fork, man, it's hard to go back. But right now is a total buyer's market. I got this fork for $470 off Pink Bike, and brand new, it used to run like $1,000. It is the Charger 2.1, not the Charger 3, but just because there's a new model doesn't make this one any worse. But I do have a dilemma. This steer tube is taller than I want it to be, and I could run a bunch of spacers over the top of the stem, which is kind of ugly, or I could just cut the steer tube. But to be honest, you know, if this bike doesn't hit all four of my goals, well, I'm gonna be looking for a different hardtail. So at the end of this video, I'll make the decision if this will become one of my main bikes or if it has to go. Another effort at making this bike have a good feel and be lightweight is installing my favorite bars. And that's this, 1UP Carbon. And I got these used for 70 bucks off Pink Bike. They're uncut, 800 millimeters wide, but I've actually been wanting to try bars cut down to 760. So let's get chopping. Dude, 
I gotta bolt this thing down or something. That did not make a good straight cut. Oh, I think I'm rocking like 755s now. And that feels pretty narrow. Oh man. Ah, uh, well, it only matters if it rides okay, right? Oh man, that is a lot of spacers right there. I don't like how much that's sticking up. I hope I don't hit my head on it or something like that or chin. But now let's move to the back of the bike. I have something that I need to do. I believe one of the biggest upgrades that you can do to your bike is to upgrade the crank set if you have some cheap cranks. These SRAM NX cranks didn't have anything wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with them at all. They work fine. Um, yeah, they're on the lower end of things, but the real issue is this bottom bracket. This is a sealed cartridge bottom bracket and they are super duper heavy and it has a really small spindle for a crank set. It even says not for downhill or jump bikes. And that's what this bike is, it's a jump bike. But all jokes aside, I need something that's super strong, able to handle all the torque I need to put down for this single speed setup. So I wanna upgrade the crank set to this, Shimano DXR cranks. Now this is a BMX crank set and I'm not even sure if it's gonna work, but this crank set can handle some serious torque. I used to use it on my race bike. So let's get to work. Oh no, dang it. These aren't gonna work. Man. First, uh, there's a couple problems. This spindle is not wide enough. I guess BMX uses like a 68, and mountain bikes need a 73 millimeter wide spindle. And then two, even if it was wide enough, I would not have enough clearance for a sprocket. It would just hit the frame, man. That would have been great to use these cranks on this frame, but I have a backup plan. I have these old Dior cranks that was on the Axum. I think I bought this in like 2017. So they're not as strong as these DXR, but I should definitely still have the weight savings from ditching the old bottom bracket. Well, that's a relief. These cranks fit, but I'm not too happy with the spacer setup and just, it's kind of janky to be honest, but I'm just making do with what I have. I'm also really not happy with this cheap Chinese sprocket on the front, but this was $7. I just had to order what I could because this is a 96 BCD, which is a little uncommon these days. And it's a 34 tooth instead of a 32. And the only thing that matters to me is if this chain line lines up and hopefully I can run it without a chain tensioner. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Press on. Oh. Oh, this is gonna be close. Hopefully I don't have to force it. Here we 
go. Oh. A little scratch there, but oh, let's see. Yes, dude. That'll work. No chain tensioner. Oh. Oh, that is a huge win for me, dude. Man, there is nothing better than having a single speed and not needing to use a chain tensioner. Dude, I was prepared too. I had this DMR simple chain whatever, and I don't even think this thing would have worked because I think it's made for quick release axles. So now I get to save a little bit of money, return this thing, but there's still something on this bike that is bothering me and needs to be addressed immediately. No more <laughs> dropper post. I know people are gonna say I'm crazy for taking off my dropper, but it's one of the most commented things I got on this single speed build. And I agree, when I was grinding uphill on this bike, I was standing the whole time. There was no need for a dropper. I barely even activated it the whole time. So I'm gonna save a lot of weight by taking this off and simplify things quite a bit. And I've been wanting to try no dropper for quite some time, to be honest with you. So I got this, a cheap Chinese carbon seat post that should save me about 300 grams. I hope it holds up and it's strong enough, but this is more of a trial run for me. And if I like this setup with no dropper, well then I think I might invest in a Thompson seat post down the line. Today is less than ideal. I've been waiting for the snow to melt for like five days now, and it's just, it's time to get out and test this bike. I've waited far too long. It's not very cold out. I mean, it's like 50 degrees. I don't know why this snow is not melting, but I don't really know what to expect. But I'm at a climb now. This bike climbs well. And I know that people say that single speed, you can never be in the right gear, but I nailed it with this gearing. 3417, very similar to a BMX bike. I can grind out uphill standing and watch this. I know that people will say I'm crazy for no dropper, but I'm moving. Watch, lower it down, close it off. Boom, ready for the downhill. That is not much longer. Go back up, boom. Seat's a little crooked. Oh. That is not much longer than uh, a regular dropper post. And I've been using the Fox Transfer dropper post a lot. And that thing is basically a manual dropper just like this one. So you could say I'm pretty used to it by now. This bike pedals well. It feels very BMX-y. I like it. I, I really nailed it on the feel and the parts and everything. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a chore. Dropping in on this trail. Whoa. <laughs> Already, whoa. This trail is called Leopards or Leonard's Loop, something like that. And the reason why I'm okay riding this one is because it's paved, the base is paved. So I'm okay, I'm not making any tire marks. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> Dude, so sketchy. I mean, this is fun, but I've, I'm not able to go <laughs> the speed that I want. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, I jumped. <laughs> well, let me head to an area that I've heard had the snow cleared off already. Maybe I'll have some luck, find some jumps to get airborne. Here we go, another jump line. Lower that seat. Whoa. <laughs> Get a little on off going.
Oh, then in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> no landing. Ooh. That was intense. Ooh. Well, the bike jumps good. Dang. My ankle's hurting though. Oh man, it sucks. The other area is just too wet. And I, it, today is just not gonna be my day to test out this bike. But I have noticed one thing, and it's a complaint about this bike. And it's something that I noticed in the last couple of videos, and that's my back ankle aches a little bit on this bike. And I've had a lot of people tell me that this bike is not compliant. It's one of the stiffest hardtails that you can get. And I think that's why my ankle hurts with this dang bike. You know, I was sitting here just admiring nature because I can't ride. And I'm just trying to decide what to do, if I want to keep this bike or not, and I've made a decision. I will not be keeping this bike. In fact, I'm gonna get a different hardtail and I just pulled the trigger right now and I ordered that hardtail and it's right here. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.